Good morning, everyone. I'm Brenda Quintana coming to you live from the Beehive with a very hoarse voice this morning. I'm so sorry. Um, we were away for Christmas and I got the flu and uh, um, I'm fine now, but my voice is still kind of uh, suffering from that. And uh, so if you hear my voice and you think I sound terrible, well, that's why. Um, so today is Casing Tuesday and it's a new year. So that's awesome. Uh, we are starting a new catalog starting tomorrow. So um, when we do our Casing Tuesday cards, I kind of stick by the philosophy that I want to use products that are currently available. So while we are very close to being in a new catalog, I am not going to yet show products or projects with the new catalog. Um, so I, um, I went into the annual catalog and I found something that, well, one of the stamp sets that I loved uh, that has been around since uh, July, June, June. And uh, I decided to showcase it. And um, so that's kind of fun being able to go and, and seek things in the annual catalog that you might not have paid attention to. And this stamp set I think works perfectly for Valentine's Day. So, um, but for all of those of you who are new, Casing Tuesday is the day when we take a card out of the catalog, we, we pick a card each week and we copy it and we have a team of bloggers that also is doing the same thing they are um, copying um, the same card that we are copying and so you have lots of different samples to choose from um, or to look at that are based on this original uh, car design. So that is the basis of it. And the neat thing about this is we've got uh, myself and Catalina who started the Casing Tuesday challenge. And then we have the group of bloggers that are blogging. Plus, we have all of you who can join in as well because it's a Facebook group and we would love to see your samples. So um, that that is the cool thing. Um, we can all participate and, and share. So that's what I hope you will do. The link to the group is in the description of this video. So you can just go ahead and click on that after, after the video and I'll get you approved or Catalina will approve you uh, for our group. And then you can lurk or you can post your card, which is what I hope you will do. So I hope you guys all had a great Christmas and a great start to the new year. And so I am going to pop over and I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you the card that we're casing today. And then I will uh, show you how I did my cards. So let me click my little flip around thing. Okay, there's my view today. It's a sunny day, but it is bitterly cold, and I'm sure it's bitterly cold for many of you in the U.S. today. Oh, rotating my phone. Okay, you gave me a message this time while I was doing that. Okay, so here is the card that we're casing. It's kind of tucked behind this card. I actually picked this card, and I did it because it has a little bit different of a layout. Usually we like to stick our focal point right in the center of the card or yeah, basically we like to stick in the center of the card. We don't stick it up in the top left corner. And I thought that's going to be interesting. Let's see if we can make that work. Um, so I like this card here. So what I did with that layout is I created these two cards um, in a Valentine's Day format. And I think I think they turned out pretty well. I love this paper. I think it's called the Naturally Eclectic Paper. Where is it? So on the one side of this paper, let me call it by the word, Naturally Eclectic. So on the one side, you've got a lot of floral designs. And then on the back side of these papers, you've got these kind of neat patterns that kind of have a C theme, I think. And they work really well with um, these Valentine's cards. So um, those are 
the stamp set called Message in a Bottle, and this paper is already available today. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to order it, so that's cool too. So this is the Message in a Bottle stamp set, and I love this one. It's a perfect Valentine's Day set. Um, this I think would make really cute um, kid Valentine's Day, like for, you know how sometimes they have to bring in Valentine's for each of the classmates. I think this is the set to do it because it's got really cute images like the octopus and the the whale and the ship and the mermaid and it's got really cute little uh, greetings like you float my boat and whale hello there so like they're not overly lovey and so I think they're um, cute and and sweet enough to be kid Valentine's days so um, I Valentine's cards and so I think this is just a great set for doing that so um, let me show you how I did the I love you card. So you'll need a card base and I've cut this piece to eight and a half by five and a half and I've scored it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. So that's my card base. Then I need a piece of designer series paper. This is the pattern on the back but this pattern is nice and neutral on the front. This uh, piece is four inches by five and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Tombow. Hopefully my it isn't too clogged after being away for such a long time. It is good. So we went on a cruise for Christmas. My parents-in-law took us on a cruise, and it was awesome. Um, and it was so nice to be in the warm weather. And now I'm freezing over here in Boston. So that's not so nice. The contrast is so great from being in um, warm weather to the deep freeze. Um, but uh, okay, so this is the base of my card. And then um, I'm gonna need a piece for my focal point and I'm gonna need a piece for um, uh, to mat it up. And so I'm using a piece of Flirty Flamingo. This piece, let me think. I can't even remember the measurements. Let me measure it real quick. This one's uh, three inches by four and a quarter. It's probably just a little bit shy on each side. I think I cut it just a little bit within those margins. So I'm just going to take some glue and then put it on here. Oh, someone says we are at plus three degrees in northern Alberta. How did that happen? I think I'm going to go to Northern Alberta. Although my parents live in British Columbia and they just told me they have a ton of snow. I don't want the snow either. <laughs> I don't know. I've gotten I've gotten weak and wimpy in and as I get older now I just want to be in warm weather. Isn't that sad? Okay, so that doesn't look so good right now, but we're going to fix that up in a second. Then my focal point layer, let me measure this real quick, is two and three quarters by four inches. So this is now I have to do some work. So I'm going to start off with um, my bottle and I've got my smoky slate ink pad. Let me eat this up. Um, probably about half an inch from the bottom. Well, that's pretty good. All right, so you noticed that um, there's a little gray spot in there. I'm not going to um, do anything with that, but I'll tell you how that gray spot happened. Um, this uh, bottle does not have the inside cut out of it. And so I dipped onto my ink pad when I was inking it up and it got a little ink and then when I was pressing it down, it transferred. So what I would do, um, you could do one of two things for the future. You can get in there with scissors and cut the inside of this bottle out and then it won't ever plague you again. So say you're doing a lot of stamping with this, I would maybe go ahead and, and cut out the inside of this so it doesn't happen. Um, or um, you just have to be really careful when you stamp. You need to clean off your stamp completely again and then you need to tap lightly to make sure you don't get any ink in the center. If you notice there's ink in the center, you either clean and start again, 
or you take um, a wet paper towel and get rid of that spot in the center. So, um, but if I was stamping a lot, I would probably go ahead and just cut out the center just so I wouldn't be plagued by it each time. Then I need my flirty flamingo ink pad. And then I'm just going to, this is just like, um, it says I love you on lots of little slips of paper. So I'm just going to ink that up. I think it actually goes like this. And then I'm going to hover this. Make sure it looks good on the inside. And there we go. You can barely notice that little gray. And that could be like a reflection off of the bottle anyway. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Oh, one more thing. We need this little heart. And that's going to be the stopper for my bottle. Or you can use the cork like I used um, for my little octopus. I would stamp that in crumb cake if you wanted to use that instead. But I think the heart makes a lot of sense. Then you're going to need your Night of Navy ink pad. And this little greeting goes along well. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, I love you. And well, the I love you is on the little slips of paper. Now I've got an ink on my finger. I'm having one of those days, you know, you get back from a trip and it takes you like a week to recover. And uh, so yesterday I had like this plan of all these things I wanted to do and I was just not feeling that great. So I am just kind of taking it easy one day at a time. I'm going to put my greeting right up atop like that. All right. Let me move my ink pads aside before I stick in more fingers or project pieces in it. So then I just need to take some glue and add this piece. And so this is all going to be lined up right at the top. It's a little bit different of a layout, but that's good because I probably wouldn't have chosen to do a layout like this. So I am expanding my horizons. So now I, I wanted to kind of recreate something tassely right here, but I didn't want it to overshadow my card. So um, this is the Whisper White Sheer Ribbon. It's like about an eighth of an inch thick. This is about 20 inches, and then I've got about a 10 inch length as well. So I'm going to wrap this around, make sure I have it straight. Let me see if I can tie this like I tied it so nicely on my other two projects. Okay, I just grabbed my locking tweezers and I didn't want to put my ribbon knot down. So I'm going to make my first knot I want about the same amount of ribbon on either side. I can always like shove it up and down later. Let me just make sure. Got about the same amount of ribbon. And then I'm going to knot this. Or not knot it. I will knot it in a second. I just want to clamp it down for a second with my locking tweezers. And then I'm going to come around and I'm going to do a knot like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take my second piece of ribbon and come in and just tie one knot over top of that. Okay. So now I've got these all going in wild different directions and that does not look so good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line all of these guys up. Okay. And then I'm going to do a knot. So I am going to do a loop. Okay, and then all of these ends have to come through this knot piece. And let me see how I do this on camera. And then I'm bringing this knot down on top. See how it's, I'm tightening on top of that existing knot, okay? 
Um, so you're just going to have to make sure you don't tighten it until it gets down to there. So you're just going to kind of tighten it. And that creates a piece of ribbon or a knot with ribbon coming down the side like that, right? So that's kind of got that little tassel effect. And then you can kind of roll this up to the top. Sorry, I'm off, off camera. Move this over. Run it over a bit to the side. So you see how that kind of comes down on the side. So you can either leave it long or you can trim it short. One of the things that I did when I was making this card, I've been using this white ribbon so much that I'm at the end of my roll. So I, the second card I made, I, I kind of did this um, uh, piece that was a little bit longer. And then I had this piece that was a little shorter and I actually like the longer ribbon better. But, you know, I didn't have enough ribbon left on the end. Like I have this much left and I didn't want to use it up before because I didn't, I wasn't placing another order until January. So I had to kind of be frugal with my ribbon and I couldn't, I didn't retie this one. I actually like it a little bit longer and you can, um, you can trim off the little edges just a wee bit, you know, just on an angle. And doesn't that look cute? I like that little tassel. It's a little different way to tie things. Now I did try this with some other ribbon, but this is just thin enough so that it's not bulky. So if you do this at home with some different ribbon and you don't like the result, it's probably because the, your ribbon's too bulky. So this one is the white sheer ribbon that I use this with and it works really nicely, but it might not work if your ribbon's a little thicker. So those are the cards. Let me scroll and see what people have written. People are saying hello from various locations hello and welcome to everyone oh there's a lot of people in frigid places like maryland and um oh amy's here from um, memphis this morning yay amy um so yeah there there are a lot of people in um cold cold places this morning oh yes I feel I feel bad for all of you because I'm in the same situation let me turn my camera around for a second okay here I am back again um, so that that's that was the card um, it is not hard to do and uh, that's what I love about this layout it's a little different um, so you know at first you might be going oh, I don't know if I don't like it centered well if you don't like it up there in the corner guess what center it you know that's the layout is just the starting point um, the casing Tuesday police doesn't come and get you and say well you must have it up in the top left corner and as you can see many of our bloggers also um, did something that was slightly different that's okay. You can do the card um, that you want. Um, the casing part is just the starting point. So that is the, the, fun, um, the fun part about casing. So I hope you will join us because it's good for you if you're just practicing your stamping and it's good for us that have been around for a while to try something new. So uh, join us if you need the measurements for this card. I'm gonna pop on there in a second and put down my ribbon measurements because I didn't have those earlier. But on my blog post, I have a link to all the supplies and I'll have a link to the measurements. And so everything um, 
will be available to you. And I did manage, before I left for my trip, I managed to load up all of those uh, Facebook videos that I have um, haven't uh, posted in December, and now they're also on YouTube. And I will do that for this video as well. So um, I hope you guys all have a fabulous day. I hope it warms up a little bit. It's got to warm up. Usually this is our February weather, so it's kind of disconcerting to have us in a deep freeze already in January. So maybe because we have the cold now, maybe we won't get it in February. That's a thought, you know. Maybe maybe it will warm up. We'll have an early spring. Oh, that would be so nice. But um, anyway, I hope you guys all have a great week. And I will see you back here next week. And next week, we have the new catalog. So now I can delve into all sorts of new stamp sets and stuff. So that will be really fun um, to see some of the new products that we have. Okay, guys, have a great week. See you soon. Bye-bye.